Hey there, uh, my name is Greg Beams. I uh, recently imported a Land Rover Defender, a 110, um, so the longer version, the wagon, into the United States from the UK. Um, did that in, uh, the truck arrived in 2016, I actually started the process back in 2015, and in going through and just doing the research, um, I learned a lot about the import laws and how to do that and how to get a, how to get a Land Rover Defender into the country. Um, and so I thought I would share that. I was actually surprised there wasn't other videos that were out there given the number of folks that are at least interested in importing a Defender into the U.S. even if they don't actually end up doing it. I would also tell you that there is a lot of misinformation that's out there so wading through that um, can be challenging. Uh, people have all sorts of opinions about what's legal and what's not and certainly this is somewhat my opinion. I'm not an attorney. Um, but I also, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I don't have a vested interest in this one way or the other. Um, I just thought I'd give some information that might be a good baseline for you if you're thinking about importing a Defender or you're interested um, or even if you just want to understand a little bit more about it. So that's really what this video is about. Um, I'm, I'm not an attorney um, and so this isn't legal advice. Uh, just throw that out there. So make sure and you do your own research and figure out what makes the most sense because making mistakes on importing a Defender into the country can uh, be very costly to say the least. Um, just to, to let you know as well, at one point Defenders were legally brought into the U.S. It was a very brief period, so Land Rover um, had them as one of their autos or one of their trucks in their, in their vehicle lineup. Um, the 110, so the longer version, the, the wagon if you will, was imported uh, in 1993, so only for one year. Um, but the Defender 90, so the shorter version, the two-door model, or three-door if you count the door on the back, uh, was actually imported uh, from 1994 to 1997. Now they stopped importing Defenders because of the airbag rules that went into effect at that point. Defenders don't have airbags, they've never had airbags, even the last one that rolled off the line in the UK in 2016 didn't have airbags, and so as a result of that, um, uh, Land Rover chose to stop importing the Defender into, into the U.S. Having said that, they're imported all over, or they're exported all over the world from the U.K., and so they're one of the more available vehicles around the world, um, just not here in the U.S. So, um, rule number one in terms of importing a vehicle into the United States, um, if you think about this, uh, you are importing a vehicle under the exception and that exception is for antique and classic cars. Um, you're not importing it under the regular rules, so you're getting an exception to the rules. And what that exception is, it's for any vehicle that is 25 years old or older that's maintained pretty much in its original condition, so it's not been modified or significantly altered. Um, and so I tend to think of that allowance as a privilege, and I'll refer to it that way. You certainly have some legal rights around that, but if you're thinking about it, you need to understand that Customs really isn't thrilled with the notion of importing older cars, especially the Defenders. There was a number of years where some less scrupulous folks um, were, were taking more recent uh, defenders and importing those into the country. They were taking older VIN numbers, so VIN numbers off of older defenders, uh, putting those on to the newer defenders, and then uh, putting those forth when they were importing them as if they were older defenders. Um, Customs figured this out and started seizing defenders. They also, um, you'll see some videos where a defender gets crushed by the Customs folks. Um, Customs works pretty closely with the EPA and with the Department of Transportation. And so as a result of that, there's a lot of, of you know, scare tactics, if you will, that are out there um, that can also be confusing. And in fact, Customs, um, in the video you can go look up, I think it's the, the Baltimore Customs group um, that is crushing a vehicle on YouTube. And even when they're talking about the reasons for crushing it, what you'll hear them, they will refer to this classic car exception, this 25-year-old exception um, rule, but then they also talk about safety and some other things. Um, which really don't apply in this instance. So what you're looking at is the 25-year-old rule that a defender that is 25 years or older can be legally imported into this country. Um, and that gets into then the next point, which is really that it can't be significantly modified. Um, and so what does that mean? And that gets a lot of speculation on the internet as well. So can't be significantly modified really gets to things like it can't have the engine to have been replaced. 
Um, it can't have the frame to have been replaced. It can't have the gearbox or the transmission to have been replaced. It can have some minor body work, so you'll see things such as doors might be changed out because of rust issues. Um, it can be painted, a few other things that can be done. But um, I would also warn you, the more modern that you have your truck uh, appear, as a result of work that you have done overseas, so typically in the UK, then the more closely that Customs is going to look at your vehicle because they're concerned that your vehicle might be one where you've swapped the VINs out and it's actually a newer vehicle. And, you know, Customs, it's really your responsibility as the importer to make sure that your vehicle complies. And so, when you import a vehicle, you are going to make um, certain claims about that. And so it's important that you work closely with uh, the company or the agent that's purchasing the vehicle or that has purchased the vehicle and they're the seller. So they're who you are buying that for from. And you'll see that there's, uh, as you start to do research on purchasing a vehicle from the UK, which is typically where they're purchased, um, you're looking for a lot of times a left-hand drive vehicle. You can import a right-hand drive vehicle, um, but typically here in the U.S. you're going to want a left-hand drive just because it's easier to navigate the roads. It's obviously more what we're used to. Um, and by the way, you can't convert a vehicle from a right-hand drive to a left-hand drive in the U.K. and have that um, imported. That's considered a modification that's not acceptable by customs and so that would get rejected. Um, one thing I would tell you too is when you see those vehicles that are getting crushed um, or, or they're getting you know thrown away if you will, um, that's really because those vehicles were imported with swapped VIN numbers. So the person importing the vehicle attempted to change the VIN numbers in order to bring a newer vehicle into the country posing as an older vehicle. Well at that point when Customs identifies that, then they're seizing that vehicle. Um, whereas that's different from if you had a, a vehicle that had uh, let's say you changed out the engine and so now the engine has a different VIN number or a different engine number because it's not the original engine. Um, they're most likely going to deny that vehicle entry into the country because they're going to look at it and say this engine isn't original, this exception on our customs, uh, EPA and DOT rules and regulations um, only allow for unmodified vehicles therefore this doesn't get into the country. Um, but if that happens, they're going to reject it, but they're not going to seize it, right? They don't have a right to take it away and crush it or sell it or do anything else because although you tried to import a vehicle, you didn't change the VIN numbers, you really didn't do anything illegal, you just tried to import a vehicle that didn't meet the requirements or the exception to the importation laws, that, that classic car antique exception. At that point, it's going to get turned around. Um, you're then going to be responsible for shipping it back overseas, typically back to whoever you purchased it from, and then you're going to have to negotiate and figure out how do you get some of your money back. Um, but understand that that truck that might be worth thirty or forty thousand dollars here is only going to be worth fifteen or twenty thousand dollars in the UK or in Europe, and so um, you're also going to suffer a pretty significant loss in monetary terms unless you can work something out with the seller. Um, so one of the first things that's important is as you work with and identify, well, who's the right builder or the right agent, um, the, the seller, if you will, that you're going to purchase your truck from. Um, there's a lot of shady characters out there in the UK and elsewhere that will make you all sorts of promises about what they'll do and, and the great shape of the truck that you're going to get. Um, I've spoken with people who got complete rust buckets in. Um, they were told it was going to be this bespoke defender um, and the reality was it was just a pile of junk. Um, if you think about it, these are 25 year old or older vehicles um, and these things are subject to rust just like anything else but Land Rovers are typically trucks that are driven out in the dirt and mud and such sticks to the frame, sticks to the body parts, that has moisture in it, that trapped moisture then starts to rust if the person didn't take care of that over time, if they just repeatedly left mud or water or whatever on the frame, on the doors, these things drip. So as a result, they are prone to rust. Um, and so you can run into some unscrupulous sellers that are really just trying to misrepresent things and sell you a bucket of bolts because they can make some money doing it. And so.